here they're going to have to come up with a real thing. Huge numbers of assets are hidden away in level three assets, which it, firms make up the numbers for what they're worth. They don't have to put them into the marketplace, but starting next year, they have to. Listen to those terms, level three assets, because you're going to see a lot of problems on Wall Street. Okay, do you have an estimate, or how much do you think we're going to see more in terms of write-off cents in the financial industry? Well, I'm not smart enough to know that, but I know we're going to see tens of, million, tens of billions of dollars more, yes. But the whole financial industry, city, I'm short Citibank, as I said, and all of these guys have lots of problems hidden away. You're also short the bond market. Yep. You think there's no hope for the bond market right now? If I were a bond portfolio manager, I'd get another job while I still can. No, bonds, in my view, peaked in 2003 and are making a big top, and bonds will be going down for years to come. And even if I'm wrong, Betty, you're not going to make any money in bonds a year between 2 and 5% in the developed world. There are better places to make money. Okay, Jim, we'll be with you again to stay with us. That was Jim Rogers, our featured guest this hour. Okay, well, Jim, we were just talking about the bond markets, but let's talk about the equity markets. You think the bull run in equities is long over, right? I mean, there's no way to make money there anymore. Well, no, there are always ways to make money. You can sell short investment banks. You can, you can, sell, you can sell short, you can make money. And periodically, there are things that you should buy. I still own a lot of utilities in America, small utilities. And if Bernanke somehow gets interest rates down, they're going to continue to do well. Now, usually you can find special situations, but in my view, Betty, the best place to invest now is either in the currency markets, you should buy the renminbi or the Swiss franc or the Japanese yen, or you, or you should buy agricultural commodities. They're wonderful opportunities in the world, always, if one is alert. Well, i got to ask you about the renminbi, because you made some news recently by saying that you're selling out of U.S. dollars and you're getting into the Chinese currency. What's your forecast for the yuan? Well, it's going to go much higher. It's bound to double or triple or quadruple over the next 10 or 20 years. There's no way it cannot go higher and higher and higher because it's, you know, it's, the, the cost in China are very, very low. They have a huge balance of trade surplus. That's going to continue for years to come. Look at the Japanese yen. The Japanese yen quadrupled over the past several decades. Japan still has a balance of trade surplus with the U.S. The renminbi is going to go much, much higher. So it's, I hate to use the word safe talking about investments, but it's got to be one of the best investments around right now. And you're not worried about asset bubbles, though, in China? Of course I am. I'm very worried about it. There's a potential stock market bubble developing in, in China. There's a real estate bubble developing in some parts of China. The economy and the stock market are two entirely different things. Entirely different. Ch Chinese stock market went down between 2001 and 2005, but the economy boomed. I'm talking about the currency. I'm, that's a different thing. Right. You know, we had Robert, Robert Mundell, the um, Nobel laureate, on earlier, uh, in, earlier in the month. And he did say, though, that if we see a fast appreciation of renminbi that could really hit the economy in China, you'd see, um, you know, you'd see in the rural areas in particular, they would be hit by the stronger currency. You think that that in any way would force the Beijing government then to say, hold on, Let's not let this uh, currency appreciate as fast. Well, some parts of the Chinese economy are, will certainly overheat, like real estate, as we discussed. But I don't know what he's talking about. The rural areas, agriculture is one of the best parts of the Chinese economy. Every time I can find an agricultural stock in China, I buy it because the Chinese government is pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into agriculture. Sure, if the renminbi goes up too fast, too much, it'll have a reaction. It'll consolidate. But over the next couple of decades, just look at what happened to the yen. That's going to happen to the renminbi. Now, you've also said, Jim, that every time the stock markets go down, as, as you, if you look historically, when stock markets go down, commodities go up, that they move in opposite directions. So where are we right now in the commodity cycle, and how much longer do we have to go? Well, the commodities bull market started in 1999. Historically, bull markets have lasted 14 to 23 years. It doesn't have to happen that way, but maybe we're a third of the way through. Maybe we're in the third or fourth inning of a nine-inning ball game. So we have a long way to go. Maybe there's going to be there. I know there'll be more corrections somewhere along the line, but somewhere we're going to have much, much, much higher prices. And you think commodities across the board? Well, I wouldn't buy lead today. Lead's at an all-time high, but sugar's 85% below its all-time high. I would buy the ones that are still down. But listen, Betty, I would have said that about lead six months ago, and it's gone, it's gone up ever since. I'm telling you, I'm a very terrible short-term trader. And gold? I own gold. I wouldn't buy it today, but I think you go, I periodically buy it if it goes down. I'll probably buy, I know I'll buy more. Okay, thank you, Jim. Well, let's get some final thoughts from Jim Rogers of Rogers Holdings. Jim, you know, we were just getting a question in. Uh, someone wants to know, and I'm sure it's just on viewers' minds, if you're a retail investor, how do you get into the renminbi? 
Well, the way I did it, uh, I went to China and opened a bank account. There are a lot of foreigners who have bank accounts there. I don't know if it's simple or not. You can certainly, there's a bank called Everbank on the internet. They, they open accounts for people in Renminbi, and they're guaranteed by the FDIC, as a matter of fact. So it can be done if one does a little homework and a little research. Okay, so it's not, obviously not a market that is completely closed off to the average no, investor. No, it's not. But I don't think you go to Citibank and, and open an account in Renminbi, unless you're IBM or something, but it can be done. Okay. Jim, you know, I know you're a big bull on China, of course, and actually you're coming out with a book later this year, A Bull in China. Um, I was there during the Asian financial crisis in 1997. You know, I want to get your sense at all whether or not you see parallels with, with what's going on there to with what's going on here in the U.S. The next crisis is going to come out of the U.S. Remember in 1997, the West bailed out Asia. This time, Asia is going to bail out the West. They've got all the reserves. China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore. They've got all the, the foreign currency reserves. They're going to bail us out when we start having a crisis here. We've already started having a crisis here, a semi-crisis. It's going to get worse. Well, with the dollar going down, though, so much, do you think there might be any hesitance, though, among the foreign governments to bail out the U.S.? I mean, you give somebody the right terms, they'll do anything. Yes, uh, it, can, it can happen. I'm not suggesting they necessarily are going to bail us out, but if it's somebody gets bailed out, it's going to have to come from there. We can't bail them out anymore. We're going to need bailing out. Well, tell us your outlook also on China itself, because they've been double-digit growth rates for so long. A lot of concerns there that they're going to they're going to hit the brakes on that, and what that's going to do to the economy. I hope so. I, they're trying to slow things down. They've raised interest rates five times. They've raised re reserve levels eight times. They're trying to slow things down. They need to slow things down. I hope they do. But it doesn't change the China story or the Asia story over the next uh, century or not. I mean, I'm moving to to Asia because moving to Asia now is like moving to New York in 19. 1907 or London in 1807, in my view, it's the wave of the future. And it's very exciting. As you, as you know, you came the wrong way, Betty. You came to, uh, to New York while, I'm, while we're moving, my family and I are moving to Asia. That's right. We pass each other on exactly. the way. Exactly. <laughs> you should buy my house. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, how, uh, how, is that, how is that going, by the way? Because, you know, that's been in the press quite a bit. You selling your town home. We're trying to sell the house, yes, yes. We, but we have definitely moved. My daughter's in school in Singapore. She's adorable and loves it, so we're there. Okay, and what's your outlook for growth there in Asia, by the way? It's going to continue to do extremely well. There are three billion people in Asia. They save in, in China. They save and invest over 35 percent of their income. In America, we save less than two percent of our income. All over Asia, they save and invest. They don't ask how many days holiday they want when they come to work. They say, how many days can I come to work? They want to live like we do, buddy, and they're working and saving to get there. To get there. Now, one economy, though, that you have been doubtful about is India. Although the Bombay Sensex has been hitting record high after record high. Are you changing your outlook on that? The Indian stock market ignores me completely. <laughs> You're exactly right. I have been so dead wrong on, on the stock market in India, that's for sure. The economy is not nearly as strong as China. They say it is, but, you know, it's like the U.S. government. They make up their numbers. Um, all governments make up their numbers. I'm not picking on them. I, I'm a skeptic of, of India. It's certainly a fabulous country to, to visit. I'm a skeptic about investing there. Okay. One quick question, Jim. What do you want the Fed to do going forward? To, if I were Bernanke, I would abolish the Fed and resign. Okay. It would be the best thing for the country. All right. Thank you very much, Jim, for your, for your insight and opinion this morning. It was great having you on.